Hello, dear Ooz Report World viewers. We are again in our studio and we have uh, special guests uh, today online uh, with us. And I would like to introduce uh, our guest uh, today, Mr. Enrico Pinali, ADB Deputy Country Director for Uzbekistan. Hello, uh, Mr. Pinali. Hello, the Brown. Hello to your viewers. Thank you. We are glad to see you here today. And uh, Mr. Pratish uh, Haladi, ADB Principal Public-Private Partnership Specialist. Welcome, uh, Mr. Haladi, to our studio. Hello, Devron. Uh, hello, viewers. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, gentlemen, today, because we have uh, today a special interview, and uh, I would like to ask you several questions, if you don't mind. So, um, Mr. Uh, Enrico and Mr. Pratish, you have recently published an article on PPP development in Uzbekistan. Uh, very informative, uh, by the way. And I would like to go through it again by analyzing the points you mentioned in the article. Uh, but before that, I would like to know about the importance of developing the PPPs here in Uzbekistan and how beneficial this partnership can be for both sides. Mr. Enrico. First of all, thank you, Devron, for inviting us. It's an honor for us to be here, to be your guests, and uh, to be the guest of Who's Report. Uh, we published this article blog uh, as we uh, would like to narrate what uh, uh, we have seen in terms of progress of uh, Uzbekistan uh, infrastructure development. Uh, this has been quite impressive. There has been an acceleration in the development of the infrastructure, in particular, the opening up of uh, the sector and the economy to private sector participation. For your viewers, I'd like to remind what a public-private partnership is, PPP. Uh, it's really a contract between a public body and a, a private organization. Uh, PPP is what they do, they bring together the expertise and the resources of the two sectors with the intention to provide services and infrastructure a better value for money. So you, uh, Lavron, you're asking me and, uh, and Pratish, why is this important for Uzbekistan? This is important because uh, Uzbekistan has a significant deficit between the requirement of investment in infrastructure and the current level of investment being undertaken by the government with all the available resources finance. Uh, so uh, what, uh, uh, what this means is that uh, the government has to explore uh, new ways, uh, alternative ways for attracting investment. And PPP is one of such mechanisms which can be used to attract international investment in financially feasible infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will help fill in the gap that I just mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, you, know, uh, you also uh, ask how can this partnership be beneficial for both sides. Uh, I think, uh, um, you know, it's important, again, to understand that uh, public-private partnership uh, provide advantages to both parties. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Uh, so, a private sector, they can bring about uh, technology and innovation that can help improve the operational efficiency of the provision of public services. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, the public sector, the, private, the public partner, the government, uh, can provide incentive and give instruction to the private sector to deliver the projects on time and within budget. You probably have heard from a lot of uh, uh, disgruntled customers that uh, infrastructure take, uh, or citizen take, uh, take a long time to develop and never get finished on time. So by involving the private sector and, bring, and keeping them up to standards of delivery and quality of delivery, uh, that could be a win-win for both sides. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Enrico. And my next question is, what should be the role of the government and private partner in this partnership? That's, a, that's another good question. So uh, going back to what I just said, I think, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, uh, beyond um, combining skills and resources between the public and the private partners, uh, it's also uh, important that these two uh, partners share risks and responsibility. Uh, what what I say by that is that there are comparative advantages be, uh, of both sides, and what is trying to uh, what a PPP is trying to do is allocate the risk between the parties in the most efficient way. Mm -hmm. In this way, uh, you know, you will have a government uh, with a role to really, um, you know, uh, 
formulate the policy, uh, create the enabling environment for participation of private, create good governance. Good governance is very important in PPP, as you need to have accountability and, and transparency in all these uh, mechanisms. Uh, but more importantly, uh, Navron, I think uh, we have to highlight the fact that uh, uh, there are always social and political concerns with PPP. Uh, and this is important that, for example, the public partner, the government, uh, tackles this, takes responsibility to socialize uh -huh. this, this structure, to, exp um, to explain the value for money, uh, the efficiency that comes with it. At the end of the day, uh, what the government is doing is delegating the day-to-day -day operation to the private sector, who is uh, better placed to deliver certain services, which is more efficient and can bring, as I said before, uh, technological innovation, as well as uh, maybe experience that having done this type of work in other countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see. Uh, now it's clear, uh, Mr. Pinali, uh, but it has been just three, four years since the country has accelerated uh, PPP uh, development. During this short period, Uzbekistan adopted first uh, public-private partnership. Law uh, created a dedicated PPP agency, also requiring aligned agencies to promote PPPs uh, for key projects. The question is, uh, Mr. Pratish, uh, to you, uh, when you do something quick, uh, you start forgetting about the quality. Is there a chance that this could or can happen with the PPP sector in Uzbekistan? Thanks very much, Dabron, for asking the question. Thanks again for having us. Mm -hmm. uh, that, it's a very good question. I'm glad you asked it. And I would start by saying that no PPP law or framework is perfect and works perfectly in every situation. Uh -huh. That is why, no matter what, it is an iterative process of doing, learning, and institutionalizing as we continue to try to make it better. But the government and we as their partners have taken several steps uh, in Uzbekistan to ensure the robustness of this process. Mm -hmm. And for this reason, we made sure that our different forms of support to the government are well coordinated and working together. For example, as we are advising the government on transactions, uh, we realize where the law can be improved and then mm -hmm. work with our policy team to table those in the next amendment. We also hire international policy advisors to make sure that international best practices are incorporated. Mm -hmm. This way, we are not reinventing the wheel. Mm -hmm. So while things are moving quickly, we don't feel that these are rushed in any way. And the time is being taken to make sure the process is as robust as possible. Mm -hmm. Overall, we're very impressed with the work of the government so far and the balance between expediency and quality and have high hopes for where the government will take this program going forward. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Halati. So, um Enrico and Pratish, let's talk about your article where uh, you presented an analysis of the development of public-private partnerships in Uzbekistan, which is really important. The article reflects an ambitious PPP development program in the country, its importance for infrastructure development as well as six key areas requiring attention in 2021. Could you please briefly explain some of these areas which you mentioned in the article, please? Sure, Dabran. L let me touch on three of these, which are interlinked, as you'll see. Um, first main point, we need to integrate PPPs at the central planning level. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? PPP is ultimately a tool, which is not a panacea for all of our infrastructure problems, but should be used in situations where it creates the most value for money for government, as Enrico had described earlier. But in order for agencies to know when to use PPP, we need to do a few things. First, we have to create awareness at line agencies so that they know which projects to propose to central government as PPP. Mm -hmm. Here, we can help train them through internationally standardized PPP certification program that we use called CP3P. Mm -hmm. Second, we need to build a project screening mechanism in central government so that the determination of when to use PPP can be made as objective and information and data driven as possible. Mm -hmm. Third, we need to provide training at central agencies to make sure that these mechanisms are adequately applied. Second main point, mm -hmm. uh, establish a project development fund. This is a fund which the government can use to hire transaction advisors. And let me explain that further. Today, the government relies on its development finance partners to provide transaction advisory services. Mm -hmm. ADB is one of those, and we're happy to support. Mm 
Mm-hmm. But as the program scales, and as there are more projects in the same sector, government will benefit from having its own fund, which it can use to hire commercial transaction advisors to support projects. Mm-hmm. This will allow more projects to be implemented in parallel. Importantly, and given the nature of PPP, such a fund should also have an expedited tender and selection process for the advisors, perhaps by having a preset panel Mm -hmm. to avoid lengthy procurement process and to ensure that PPP projects can be developed as quickly as possible. Third main point, a plan for post-close implementation. In every PPP project that I've been a part of at ADB that's closed, we've realized that the support doesn't end with the signing of a contract. For the government, that's actually just the beginning. Mm -hmm. They enter into a um, multi-decade period where they have to manage and monitor that contract. So it is important for line agencies to think now about how they will uh, implement a project monitoring unit and put processes in place to manage that contract. ADB has the ability to provide grant support through our Asia Pacific project preparation facility to do just that Mm -hmm. uh, and work with agencies to make sure that they're well set up to implement these PPP contracts after they sign them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Haladi. Uh, Very informative. Uh, You also refer to the need to enable local banks to participate in PPPs. Uh, what's impacting our uh, banking sector from playing a more active role in the financing of PPPs? Mr. Enrico, please. Sure, Davron. Uh, first of all, uh, let me say that the government has embarked on embarking an ambitious program uh, of reforming the banking sector, which puts the country in the right direction to modernize the financial sector overall. As it pertains to PPP, there are certain particulars. It's important to understand that a typical um, financing package of a, of a PPP, it, uh, long-term, uh, long-term debt accounts for about 70 to 80 percent of that of the financing package, uh, and that debt long-term means 10, 12, even more, uh, 15, 20 years. Uh, as you can, uh, you know, as you might be familiar with your with your banks here, uh, you know, a typical, uh, you know, deposit uh, savings account. Uh, they are, they are uh, you know, they have an average term between six to 12 months. As you can see, the, this creates a big asset liability in the balance sheet of the banks, which impedes them from being able to attend this type of long-term financing. And this is something that, of course, uh, you know, as the government embarks in these reforms and as, uh, as there are more and more uh, opportunities to, to, to uh, raise long-term uh, uh, um, funding, uh, uh, the gap will, will will be less. With that said, at this point in time, this is a major, major uh, impediment, and this is uh, actually a normal that if I were the uh, central bank, I would definitely look at this uh, as a non-prudent behavior to take short-term money and lend it very long-term. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, in your article, you also mentioned uh, bring Uzbekistan to the world. Uh, Do you think uh, the PPP program and the system itself in the country are ready to be promoted? And what is the expectation on the foreign companies' interest in participating in Uzbekistan's PPP projects and tenders? So, uh, I actually think so. Uh, And I believe uh, Pratish will agree with me on this. Uh, First of all, there is a solid regulatory framework in place. Uh, Several projects have been tendered. Plus, there is a robust pipeline of projects that is being built. Uh, so I think this is the right time to promote uh, uh, Uzbekistan PPP uh, program globally. And in addition, Davron, if you if you allow me, uh, you know we we have been through COVID. Uh, I've been here in Tashkent for hmm. uh, to to all the quarantine period, and you know how we moved uh, to pretty much working online. And even major conferences now have have, have moved online. So there's really an, a great opportunity now. It's greater than ever to use the digital channels to promote uh, Uzbekistan. And I think uh, uh, what our uh, article said, this is really the time to maximize the uh, coverage from international media. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of interest of, uh, of, uh, of foreign participants or international participants to the tenders, uh, some of the uh, ADB recent project, which some of which actually Pratish himself led uh, as an advisor uh, for ADB, um, show that leading companies from all over the world are interested in uh, bidding for those projects. 
Uh, and these projects actually go across multiple sectors, from renewable energy to uh, wastewater, wastewater uh, treatment plants. Mm -hmm. um, so, one more thing I like to, to, you know, just to not be too ADB centric, but also uh, there. Just yesterday, as you saw, uh, there was a new uh, thermal power plant in Sidaria, mm -hmm. which reached yeah, financial close, right. as well as a solar power plant back in December in Navoi that also reached financial close and. Both, both of them had very high level reputable uh, foreign investors participating. So the interest is there and I think this is the right time uh, to push this agenda. And my final question is uh, what has ADB's approach been in Uzbekistan and uh, what are ADB's future plans to support the PPP sector, Mr. Pradesh? Thank you, Dabran. That's a great question. ADB, just to give you a bit of background, has a comprehensive four-pillar approach to PPPs in general. Mm -hmm. The four pillars of our approach are building awareness, building institutional support, project development, and project financing. Mm -hmm. And we view these as interconnected, and we view these as a pipeline for projects to start from an idea and reach completion. We also realize that PPPs can be blocked at any of these areas. And so our strategy has to address all of them in concert and in a coordinated way. So in Uzbekistan, our approach has been to work with government first to understand what are the bespoke issues facing Uzbekistan or rather the PPP program in Uzbekistan, and then develop a comprehensive solution across all four pillars and go back and figure out how to put the right ADB team on it with the right uh, needed skill sets and mm -hmm. mobilize the right products to address each component of the solution. Mm -hmm. So let me touch on a few aspects of that. First, because the program here is still fairly new, we needed to anchor our solution with an exceptionally strong policy support mechanism. And a key to that was the placement of two high-level consultants, one of which was the previous head of the globally recognized Bangladesh PPP Authority. And mm -hmm. we placed these consultants within the government to sit next to the uh, deputy ministers to actually provide day-to-day -day advice. Mm -hmm. Second, we also realized that awareness has to be built across government. So we created a training program that would allow officials from more than 15 agencies to participate and then obtain an internationally recognized certification. Uh, and this is called the CP3P program. We're also working with the central agency to implement uh, what's called SOURCE, a technology platform that will help agencies prepare projects, share information, and benchmark against projects in other countries. So this is a very powerful tool that we're helping to install uh, in Uzbekistan now. Third, we are providing transaction advisory services in some priority areas for government. Our goal here is not just to close projects, we also want to create a contract template for the government so that after we're done with the first project, the government will have a template which it can then use with or without our help to implement future projects. It's part of our objective to create a sustainable PPP program that government can run on its own. Now, lastly, we realize that one problem which will face many projects is, as Enrico pointed out earlier, the inability of local banks to provide long-term soon project finance. So mm -hmm. we're working with the World Bank and the government to create an intermediary financing vehicle, which may help to fill this gap. And this is a strategy we've done in other countries that we hope will be successful here as well. Again, these components all have to be linked. A programmatic and interconnected approach is necessary. Institutional development has to be driven by broad-based capacity building. Legislative changes should be informed by lessons learned from transactions and the first transactions will require development bank financing. As the government takes its program to the next level, we hope to expand our support along the lines of the items we mentioned earlier and in the blog, always adjusting as needed by the situation and also by our clients. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for this informative conversation. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, definitely a special thanks for your article and PPP uh, development in Uzbekistan, uh, because uh, you're making definitely a great contribution to the country. Uh, Mr. Uh, I know, I'm sure, that it will be interesting for our Uzreport World viewers that me and uh, Mr. Enrico Pinali, we are in Tashkent. 
And Mr. Uh, Pradesh Haladi, he is uh, not in Tashkent. He is talking with us from a different country. And I know that there is a time difference. Uh, thanks for your uh, flexible time and for joining us today. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Davron. It's a, a real pleasure. Thank you. Uh, it's our pleasure, and uh, uh, I'm sure uh, very soon we'll have the chance to meet each other in our studio and to have uh, a greater, bigger interview with your uh, latest researchers uh, very soon. Uh, I'm sure so. You're always welcome uh, to our Uz Report World uh, studio. Thank you, Dalran. Thank, thank you very much. So, uh, dear Uz Report World viewers, we had a special interview uh, today with our online guests uh, from ADB and with their uh, latest uh, article and research on PPP development in Uzbekistan. Mr. Enrico Pinalli, ADB Deputy uh, Country Director for Uzbekistan, was with us. And definitely uh, Pratish Haladi, ADB Principal Public Private Partnership Specialist, uh, also uh, today was with us in our studio. Uh, with uh, their online uh, research for the latest article on PPP development in Uzbekistan. Thank you so much. Stay safe and goodbye.